Senator Onofre, like uh, most other power plants in the last 10, 15 years, has been using what is called high burnout fuel. Uh, reduce the number of refuelings, so allow longer operation without stopping nuclear power plants. And so as a result, the fuel rods are hotter. Uh, after 10 years, the fuel rods are about twice as hot uh, thermally as, as um, in terms of uh, thermal power generation as they would be with low burnout fuel. Uh, San Onofre seems to have exceeded the, the highest burnout here seems to have exceeded the levels that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission seems to speak about in their environmental impact statement uh, in terms of worrying about disposal. So that's kind of a mystery and I wondered whether San Onofre had explicit authorization to exceed the 62.5 gigawatt day per ton limit. I'm Arjun Makijani, I'm president of the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research. So high burnout fuel more susceptible to damage, more susceptible to undergoing high temperatures. NRC does not have the data. Uh, and so I have thought, is we, what we know about spent fuel and dry storage is from examination of a single low burnout spent fuel assembly that had been in dry storage for 10 years or 15 years. There's a report about it, was physically examined, um, and but we don't know anything about, high burnout was authorized without knowing anything about the back end of what happens. So I'm not entirely sure what happens when you put this stuff and the temperature inside the dry cask get hot because it's harder to cool it. I'm not sure that you need to store it as long as 20 years, but I'm not sure it's good to take it out of the pool, especially the highest burnout fuel. I, I don't have an answer to it. And to the extent that I know, I don't think anybody can tell you because we don't have the physical evidence. This is what happens in a reactor. So when you increase the burnout, this this side is how many oxides, so it's metal rods, right? The oxides build up. So the oxides build up. And you can see this is this is about 6,000. So you can, the, the face uh, between the red lines is the uncertainty, and the, the top red line is sort of the maximum damage or oxide accumulation you see. And on the right chart, you see the same for how much hydrogen is seeping, weakening the fuel rod structure. So when you have these two kinds of weakening, of course, when your gas build up and heat build up, it's much more susceptible to break apart. So high burnout fuel more susceptible to damage, more susceptible to undergoing high temperatures. NRC does not have the data. Uh, and so I have talked about, there are already 95 failed fuel assemblies in dry storage in San Onofre from data from an NRC inspection report of 2011. I don't know if any of these are high burnout damage spent fuel assemblies. So I don't have the answer but we really need to push the NRC to do the research on high burn of spent fuel, examine it much more closely while it's in the pools because it's not immune from damage in the pools.